For this question, we're told that we begin with one kilogram of austenite, and the initial composition is 1.15 weight percent carbon, which places us somewhere in this, in this region along this line or so. It says that it's cooled down to less than 727C. This is the line for 727C, so that's the eutectoid reaction. Given that information, we're asked the following. What is the pro-eutectoid phase? How many kilograms each of total ferrite and cementite form? How many kilograms each of perlite and, and pro-eutectoid phase form? And lastly, can we sketch the resulting microstructure? So let's begin with the first one. We're asked to identify what the pro-eutectoid phase is. The pro-eutectoid phase is the phase that forms that's part of the eutectoid reaction but happens before the eutectoid temperature. So let's remind ourselves, a eutectoid reaction is solid one going to solid two plus solid three. Or in this case, austenite going to a mixture of ferrite plus Fe3C. Therefore, we look, and as we're descending in temperature, we will eventually get to the point where we have alpha plus Fe3C, ferrite plus cementite. But before we get there, we have to go from a region where we have a mixture of austenite and Fe3C. So therefore, Fe3C, this is our pro-eutectoid phase. That's the phase that's forming before the eutectoid reaction. Next question says, how many kilograms each of total ferrite and cementite will form? Well, since we're talking about ferrite and cementite, that's down here in this region. So we're going to cool it down this line down below the 727C. Now, we can recognize that there are different lengths of line that correspond to the lever roll. We have this length of line from 1.15 all the way up to 6.7. We have this length of line from 0 0.022 up to 1.15. And we have the combined total length of the line from 0 0.022 all the way up to 6.7. If we know those values, we can determine the weight fraction of the different phases. The weight fraction of the alpha phase is just going to be the purple line divided by the blue line. And the weight fraction of the cementite is going to be the length of the green line divided by the blue line which mathematically we can just write using the lever rule. As before, when using the lever rule, we're going to take the portion of the line opposite of the phase we're interested in. So if we want to know how much weight percent alpha, then we want the length of the line opposite of it, which is the purple length. That will be 6.7 minus 1.15. We're going to divide that by the total length, 6.7 minus 0 0.022. If now we want the weight percent of the carbide, iron carbide, cementite, then we're going to take the length opposite of it, which is the green section, divided by the total length, which is the blue section. Punching values in for these, we find that it's 83.1 weight percent of the alpha phase. And since we started out with one kilogram, that means that we have 0 0.831 kilograms of the alpha phase and we have 16.9 weight percent of cementite, or in other words, we have 0 0.169 kilograms of Fe3C. We can do the exact same approach for part C, which asks us how many kilograms each of perlite and proeutectoid phase form. Now, we're going to be talking about the region above the eutectoid temperature, so let's overlay our lines as before. Again, we can write out the solution to this using the lever rule mathematically as follows. The weight percent perlite, and again, perlite is everything that used to be austenite that's going to get transformed into a mixture of ferrite and cementite. That's going to be the purple length of the line divided by the blue length of the line. Meanwhile, the amount of proeutectoid phase that forms will be the green length divided by the blue length. And this has to be everything which was cementite prior to the eutectoid reaction. When we punch these in, we find that it's 93.4 weight percent perlite, or in other words, 0 0.934 kilograms of perlite, and 0 0.066 kilograms of proeutectoid. 
cementite. For part D, it then asks us to sketch and label the resulting microstructure. Well, we started out here in the austenite regime somewhere. We're going to cool it down eventually to this point. So the first thing it's going to start with is a structure that has just grains in the austenite phase. So these are all austenite. They're all at the same composition of C0. However, as we cool it down just above 727 degrees Celsius, we're now going to have a structure that looks like this. Where we used to have grains, we're now going to have a secondary phase forming right along these microstructures, right? So we still have austenite, but now we have our pro-eutectoid Fe3C forming, right? That's just above the eutectoid reaction. Now, why does the, the Fe3C form along those grain boundaries? Well, because every new surface that you form has a surface energy associated with it. So if it's going to have to form a new phase, it's going to form it where an old surface used to be to minimize new surface area. As soon as you go below the eutectoid temperature, 727, we now have a structure that looks as follows. We still have the pro-eutectoid phase roughly where it was before, but now we have a mixture of lamellar ferrite and Fe3 here. So we have, this is our perlite region which is alpha plus Fe3C. The ferrite here has a composition of 0 0.022 weight percent carbon, whereas the Fe3C is 6.7 weight percent carbon. How much of that we already determined previously. For example, we know that there is 934 grams of this perlite phase. Meanwhile, in the pro-eutectoid phase, this is Fe3C. It is 6.7 weight percent carbon. And we know that there is total 66 grams of this present.